Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something Basics. Today, we set up a Raspberry Pi for remote access over Wi-Fi. Raspberry Pis are low-cost, single-board computers found in many of today's maker projects. In addition to having input and output pins like a microcontroller, these little systems on a chip run a full Linux operating system, which makes them great for use in complex projects that benefit from having the functionality of a full PC. Because Raspberry Pis are literally small computers, it's possible to connect an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse to them using their onboard HDMI and USB ports. While this can be great for initial development, it can be a bit impractical to connect these components to a Pi once it's integrated into a project. To overcome this, we're going to set up a Pi so that it can be accessed from another computer over Wi-Fi. This will allow you to use a second computer's monitor, keyboard, and mouse to interact with the Pi without actually needing to connect any of these components to it. In this video, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi Zero to demonstrate the setup process. However, these steps are the exact same for any of the Raspberry Pi models. Begin by heading to raspberrypi.org and download the latest version of the Raspbian operating system from the download section. Unless you're intimately familiar with the Linux command line, be sure to download the full desktop image version listed on the site, as this version contains an operating system with a full graphical user interface. The downloaded zip file contains an ISO image, which will need to be written to an SD card. To do so, download the Win32 Disk Imager application, which can be found at sourceforge.net slash projects slash Win32 Disk Imager. A link to this program can be found in the video description below. Once this file downloads, insert your SD card into your PC. Then, unzip the Raspbian image you downloaded previously and open the Win32 Disk Imager application. Here, select the Raspbian image file and make sure that the device letter matches the device letter of the SD card you just inserted. Then, click the Write button, followed by the Yes option in the ensuing pop-up window. The image is quite large, so the writing process will take a few minutes. Grab a snack until the progress bar reaches 100%. Once the image is written to the SD card, insert it into the Raspberry Pi's SD card slot and connect a monitor to the Pi via its HDMI port. After this, connect a keyboard, mouse, and Wi-Fi adapter to the Pi's USB ports. If you're setting up a Raspberry Pi 1 or Raspberry Pi 0, you will need to use a USB hub to connect all of these devices, as these models do not have enough onboard USB ports. Be aware that depending on the current draw of your peripherals, you may need to use a USB hub with an external power supply for all of these devices to function correctly, since the USB port can only supply 500 milliamps of current. Finally, connect a USB cable to the Pi's power port and plug it into an outlet using a 5 volt power adapter. The Raspberry Pi will now boot. At this point, it's a fully functional Linux computer identical to a standard desktop PC, so if this is how you'd like to use your Pi, you can stop the tutorial now. To enable remote access to the Pi, open the Pi's command console by clicking on the icon in the top of the title bar and typing sudo raspi-config into the command line. This will bring up the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool, which will allow you to modify the computer's low-level system options. Highlight Advanced Options and press Enter. In the following menu, select SSH, press Enter, and select Yes when prompted if you would like the SSH server to be enabled. After returning to the main menu, select Finish to complete the setup. Back on the desktop, click on the networking icon in the title bar, select your Wi-Fi network, and enter your network password in the resulting pop-up. Your Raspberry Pi should now be connected to your Wi-Fi network. Return to the command console and type in ifconfig. This will print out your Raspberry Pi's network information. Locate the INET address associated with your Wi-Fi connection, which is most likely called WLAN0, and write it down. This is the IP address of your Raspberry Pi on your Wi-Fi network. The final step is to install XRDP, a protocol to access the Pi's desktop remotely. At the command line, type sudo apt-get, install XRDP, and type y when prompted. At this point, you can close the command console and shut down your Pi. Once it is shut down, disconnect the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Depending on the current draw of the Wi-Fi adapter you're using, you may be able to plug it directly into the Pi's USB port without the externally powered USB hub, which is great for keeping the footprint of your Pi as small as possible. Power the Pi back up, and power up another computer that is also connected to your Wi-Fi network. Once both computers have booted, open up your remote desktop program of choice on your other computer. In this example, my other computer runs Windows 7, which has the remote desktop connection application pre-installed by default. In the computer field, enter the Raspberry Pi's IP address you wrote down previously. Pressing enter will prompt you to confirm the connection, after which you will be taken to a login screen in the pop-up window. Using the keyboard on your second computer, enter Pi as the username and Raspberry in all lowercase as the password, which will log you into the Raspberry Pi's default user account. 
you should now be able to see your Raspberry Pi's desktop while having full keyboard and mouse control from your second computer. Your Raspberry Pi is now configured for remote desktop access over your local Wi-Fi network and ready to be integrated into your next project. Since you can still use your Pi as a full computer, you can still write, upload, and modify code once it's integrated into your project. This allows you to debug and add features on the fly, which can greatly speed up development time. Raspberry Pis are useful for tons of great projects. If you have a project that you'd like to share with me, please leave a link to it in the comments below or connect with me on social media. Well, that's all there is to this episode of Super Make Something Basics. See you next time. Now go Super Make Something. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. To keep up with my latest projects, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out more episodes by clicking on the video to the right. Connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and be sure to visit supermakesomething.com to download files for this and other projects. See you next time. Now go Super Make Something.